Hello, I'm Aaron and welcome back to the Last Stand Gamers channel. Today we're taking a look at the Occupy Mars Prologue, that's free to play and with the full game coming to Steam soon as an early access. It's developed by Pyramid Games, not heard too much out of these lads, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, be before we begin though, full disclosure with my relationship with Pyramid Games, there is nothing at all. They dropped me an email saying that the prologue had came out and I thought, you know what, we'll check it out, it seems right up my straight. Now I'm going to start by stating the obvious. There is plenty of titles offering a Mars survival experience. Coming to mind is games like Take on Mars or Mars Colony Challenger. Can Occupy Mars make an impact on an already rather niche audience? So, Occupy Mars, what is it all about then? Well, in their own words, it's a highly technical open world sandbox, and I can agree with them, it was highly technical and it did take me some time to get my head around it. The sandbox part, since this was the prologue and you were kind of restricted to one small crater area, I can't really comment too much on that. And the best way of probably explaining my experience was talking through it in a, a dark cinematic voice. As I arrived at the, the Gale Crater, I was given a small tutorial. We, <laughs> the first thing was to collect a rock, basically. They wanted me to use this rover arm to pick up this rock and load it into the back. And I thought that a rover arm and this sort of functionality is pretty cool. Nothing new. I've seen rover arms that you can control like this in many other games, but still it was quite fun. Then they directed me over to some scrap where I used a grinder to scrap it down. Noth nothing new again. And then I headed over to another rock and I could start to feel why this game could be quite enjoyable to play. Um, it was too large for my arm to pick up and load into the back of the vehicle. So I got my drill out, I started drilling at it, the rock cracked open and then I loaded the different fragments into the back of the rover. And I was starting to think this, this is quite an interesting survival game. What are they going to have me do next with these Rs? So we headed to this processing plant. The only issue was the processing plant was out of battery, so it was out of power. So I had to work out how to power this thing up. I looked over the edge to a mess of wires down here, and this is where the technical part begun. Uh, first thing to do was just to plug it in and up the wattage uh, to 25 kilowatts. And that gave me access to the crusher that grinded up the rocks and processed the ore into some materials to build. Now, the issue that they had here was there was only one power bank or battery bank at this little station. And that wasn't enough for the station to survive through the night. So they had me build a second one. Now, this brings me to the sort of building mechanics. It was really simple, straightforward stuff. Um, you selected what you needed to build from the printer. It printed off the components. You headed down. And with the little weldy tool, you welded it up. It wasn't a fancy weld the animation it was just a green block um, and it came out the ground i attached it a extra solar panel to it and off i was and i thought that was it i thought oh that that power system was easy oh i was wrong uh, you had to adjust the power wattage just enough so it charged the batteries in the day so you could last all night the first uh, my first life i died in the evening i just ran out of power i didn't have enough power to power the habitat so there's a lot of other things going on here we now have to head over to the water pump and oxygen sort of area, connect this up to the habitat, make sure the habitat now has enough power. But oh no, we've not got enough power for the grinder sort of printing press area and the, the habitat at once. So we've got to balance our power between them or unplug one and plug another one in. Um, it, it was it was getting a little bit complicated, but I worked out a system. I basically balanced charged the generators and the batteries in the day so I could survive at night. And with this constant power underway, it meant that I could sustain my potatoes. So you do need to eat, you do need to drink, and you need to keep an eye on your oxygen. Of course, if you're in an oxygenated environment, like the hydrogen, or not the hydrogen, like the habitat, then you are totally fine. So in the habitat, I had a quick nosy around. There's some desks, some cute areas, and there's a workstation up top, and it brought me up to this little mini soldering type task. And I, I was like, what is this all about? And then I realized that all the ships, a lot of the modules and components, when they break, if they get damaged or you mess with the system a little bit you can cause them to set fire and when these components get damaged the circuit board is damaged you take the circuit board to the work desk and you have to solder in exchange components it was a real cool mini game and you know it gave me nightmares of my soldering days when i was soldering connectors to things and how steady you have to be with your arm i just don't know maybe my mouse was just too sensitive but it was rather difficult so all this aside 
I hadn't grown any plants yet, and my first batch really wasn't too good. I, the power wasn't stable enough, so I held on for dear life using the rations that I'd kept stored on the rover. The final day, I tell you, when I came downstairs after having a nap and I saw them potatoes, I was saved. All I had to do now was survive with the sandstorm, load up a cow container with a bit of resource and get the hell out of there. The night went and it felt like the sandstorm went on forever. I went out in the sandstorm just to briefly check on the reactors and they, they were running low. But luckily I charged them just enough to get me through the night. And then I had to evacuate. Of course, I feel like the, the final task to, sucks all the power out of everything, so you have to go then. I guess this is kind of forcing you to not play on. So if you do want to try to play on and do more with this scenario, don't complete all the objectives. Just have a play around where you can. So that brings me to the conclusion of the first part. That was my gameplay experience. I really enjoyed it. I had some fun. Uh, at the start, it was a bit frustrating trying to work out how the power is balanced and what needs what power and how you can balance it and charge your rover at the same time, for instance, um, and setting up the balanced charging and the sort of trickle charge system. Oh, you probably just think just me saying it to you is probably a little bit confusing, but it worked out well and the mechanics that they have in place for it are rather fun. Now, it won't be complete if I didn't have some things I didn't like as well. Now, the first thing that, maybe it's a, a little bit of nitpick in this, but cable management, I've never wanted cable ties so much in my life. I had cables and wires going absolutely everywhere. Maybe they could introduce some sort of color coding system um, so I know what wire is going to what because there was sometimes when a wire would intersect with another one and I thought it was going one place and then the next minute I've unplugged my whole base and the, the potatoes are crying. It, it was it was an absolute mess at some point. Um, maybe, maybe some zip ties or maybe just that you can move the cable a little bit left or right so you, you know where it is. There needs to be some sort of way of managing the cables a little bit better. The other thing is scrapping some of the modules that you find out in the field. God, it took for a while. It, I was there for ages scrapping these components down. It was far more effective literally to break the ore into pieces and haul it back to base. You seem to get more resources. You could build whatever you wanted out of it. And the scrap that I found in the crater was, was really not too useful. The, the uh, more improved tools, I can see what they're working on there. So you can scrap things faster. You can drill things faster. That's cool and stuff. But for a demo or a prologue, you need a little bit of a faster way of getting players into the experience. Well, that's in my opinion anyway because if you can get them hooked and get them interested and show them all the cool mechanics without making them just bog down on some of the more advanced stuff such as the power management and the, the processing so you've heard my story of playing the prologue and i've also give you some of the bits i didn't like about it now i feel like there isn't really anything new here it has been done in the past but i'm not saying it can't be done better I've not seen a Mars type survival game really kicking any doors, really causing any trouble in this niche. And I'm really hoping that Occupy Mars does something a little bit differently. They listen to the community, they get their feedback from the pro prologue on board and really challenge themselves while developing this in early access. It could make a really cool title. So my final thoughts then on Occupy Mars. Would I consider picking this up when it comes out on early access? Yes. I probably would. I think there's a lot of cool things here. It's not doing a lot different than other titles, but it was fun. I enjoyed playing it and I enjoyed managing the power and it kept me on my toes. There's a lot of games like this that allow too much sit back and relax time. You've literally sorted everything out and you just sit back there and you just watch it all work out. You had to be on the ball and utilizing your time well in Occupy Mars and that's something that I really enjoyed doing. I would like to see maybe a multiplayer experience in the future, maybe a few friends to co-op with. I'm not asking for a, a versus sort of thing. I don't know even if that would be possible, but a co-op experience surviving with your friends would be really cool. Anyway, I'm going to keep an eye on this project, see how it develops, and I'll keep you informed if anything changes. Anyway, for the moment, jump on Steam, check it out, have a go at the pre-log. It's free to play. There can be a link down in the description below, and I will see you next time.